City of mine, how I love, how I love the city of mine. It never gets me down. City of mine. I don't know if it caught the same URL or not. Let me check. I don't think it did, but I found it. All right, gang, it might not have taken the same URL. So if anybody is on the old page, go and comment the new URL because, you know, life happens. But this is why we do this. All right, here we go. We back. I'm skipping the intro, everything right now. I'm just going in and just like fixing it. Super, man, Facebook, I want to punch you square in the Zuckerberg. <laughs> There we go. There we go. There we go. Good thing. Good thing. Man, everybody's coming back. Woo. All right, gang. We did it. And the funniest part about this whole thing, the one person I've been harassing to come to the show because I, I wanted to chat with her for so long is Heather. And she comes and, you know, of course, I hosed it. But um, I'll blame last night celebrating drinking that nice 12-year Yamazaki Tutankhamun. Yep, that was probably what did it. <laughs> Gang, we got a dope session today. Um, if anybody is straggling, somebody please go into the old video, drop in the comments the, the new link, and maybe they'll see it, maybe they won't. We'll see what happens. But I'm pretty sure most everybody would know how to find us because, you know, we're tight like that. All right, so without further ado, if you're new around here, sorry about the confusion. I am Doc Rock, content creation coach. Today, I am bringing a wonderful creator, somebody who like just has a different approach to teaching folks how to do the YouTube thing. Um, it's kind of funny because I'll, I'll just go ahead and compare us to fire and ice, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely light your ass to flame Treat you like blue, Drew Barrymore, put my nice size 12 drill sergeant foot straight square in your keister and make you move. And Heather will rub you with feathers and angelic dust and be like, come along. <laughs> so that's even super funny because it's like day and night contrast, but yet we have the exact same mission, move you forward. So yeah, this is going to be cool. And I just, I just love it. You know, this is going to be a dope session. Uh, she by herself is one of the world's greatest creators. She's, she's married to the other prom King. I call them the YouTube prom couple. Like they remind me of when I was in high school. There's like, there should be a movie, Heather and Tom, <laughs> except for no one in my group do the orgasm scene in the restaurant. I, that would that'll get you kicked out. <laughs> anyway, gang, without further ado, let's say hello to Miss Heather Ramirez. HR. Hi everybody. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Thanks for the intro, man. You like my psycho intro? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> All right, Heather, tell them a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Heather Ramirez. I have been creating on YouTube since 2016, and I am a YouTube coach. I help people share their stories and build their brands through YouTube. There you go. That's all there is to it. <laughs> See, I, gang, this is funny because I struggle with that when I go to shows and stuff like that. And then, like, tell people a little bit about yourself. I kind of don't really know what to say because I have a lot about myself. Um, yeah. Just because I'm elderly, I see Mr. Sparks over uh, um, Spink over here making trouble. Okay, I turned Heather up a little bit. Let's see if that works. Can you um, hear me? Hello, hello, hello. No, nah, it's just because you're quiet and I'm loud. I think <laughs> when you're by yourself, it's the right level. But uh, when you're when you talking with me, it's going to be I'm um, loud. So. Her audio is low. Oh, man. Let's give, let's, no, I'll just crank you up a little bit. Let's see. I, I'll How's crank you that? Up a, How's that? I'll crank you up a lot a bit. And I'll crank me down a bit. And then we should be leaving. I mean, leaving. We should be even. See, I can't even speak English yet. First of all, I got to say what's up to the people in the chat real quick. Um, thank you guys for being willing to make the move. Sorry, I did something dumb. Morning, JD is here. Good to see you, brother. James is here, also representing the great state of Hawaii. Why in the heck did you move? Uh, India Delgado will say, Doc, lock your scenes. Okay, yeah, I know, I know. Shut up. <laughs> so, how do I change my, um, how do I get on both on two channels? Gosh, I swear. This is... Um, it should automatically move you to right and left because yeah. you're coming in from your Roadcaster Pro, yeah? No, just, uh, oh, here, wait, let me try this. 
That might work. You can oh, mux good. mux the channels me. together. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Is it is it muxing to two people? Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Can how can are we, we doing? Have... Can you guys hear me? What about that? I don't have but, a an RCP. <laughs> oh. Oh, just go in Tom's room and steal his. I know. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like, what? What happened? All right. Anyway, okay, we're going to... I we're, guess that that's okay. You guys can oh. hear, so let's leave it at Still that. Still one channel. Gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you, Serenity. And Mr. Camera Junkie is here. Josh is here. What's up, brother? Callie. I like Callie's hair matches the banner. It's like perfect. <laughs> Dev Chambers is in a secret hiding cave, um, wherever Dev Chambers' secret hiding cave is. <laughs> and then uh, we got Carmen San Diego is in the building. Que pasa, Carmelita? Good to see you here. Simply Obs, congratulations, Obs, on being the uh, ECAM family of the month. You and Kevin Cox. Uh, boom. Right? I like the new avatar too. I appreciate that. What's up, Val? Good to see you here. And thank you, Mr. Rob, for dropping the class session. Dun, dun, dun. And, oh, my God, gang. Yes, um, thank you guys so much for the push and keeping me moving and keeping my head in the game and, like, all of the above, like, being able to, yeah, get to my my goal is kind of massive. It's kind of massive. I appreciate you guys. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Mr. Jared. I blame your podcast. Your podcast did it. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. Uh, he went to Jared. And Keely is here. Good to see you, Keels. And, of course, Press and So is here. Thank you, guys, Press and So. I, you know, I was going to tell you, um, you definitely got to come up with your Passion Economy shirts and then talk to Andrew and Sylvia and they'll get yeah. you on. I mean, because, I mean, you, you have yeah, yeah. all the shirts, so you know. They're just dope. Yeah. <laughs> What's on up, TVD? On the list, for sure. TV, we actually just worked on a new design today. It took all of five minutes. <laughs> okay. It probably took Andrew longer than that. It took me all of five minutes to <laughs> say, okay, let's do this. <laughs> so, yes, we yeah, got new something favorite shirts, coming. So. Right. Isn't it comfortable? Every it's time so comfy. they send me one and like if I get the package intercepted by the little midget that lives on the opposite side of my bed, um, <laughs> it will be a nightgown before it becomes my shirt. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? I got to wear that. Oh, but it's so soft and so comfortable. I'm like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> like She always jacks my good shirts. And so when I got the vlogman shirt and I had taken them out and see me, I'll just wear a shirt automatically. She's from the ilk of you got to wash it. If you go to the store, you buy something, you got to wash it before you wear That's it. That's me. See, yeah. girls, I guess. Guys, we don't care. We'll, wear that. <laughs> we'll walk out of the store, put the shirt on, and go to town. Like, we're good, you know? And then she's like, oh, I'm going to wash this. And then she was like, oh, this is so soft. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm never going to see that shirt again. Yeah. And it's funny because I'm like a 2X and Karen's 411. So it's like a. Tent. Oh my gosh. But she wow. just rocked. It's like, mm, I'm going to keep this. I'm like, I'm going to kill you. Give me my shirt back. Okay, gang, we're going to live on one channel because I don't know what's popping. Hey, Phil, good to see you here. Homesick Mac is here. Uh, Chuck Smith is in the building. Good to see you. Mm. Mike, I love the Neo Geo thing. I love that, bro. That is the bomb. That was one of my, one of my addictions back in the day. And then Brian is here. And I think we got everybody. Dr. Elo, we are ready to rock. Sylvia is here. Hey, Vinny. Vinny is here. Laura. And I think we covered everybody. I don't hope I didn't miss. Hey, Carlos. There we go. Carlos is the man. Dun, dun, dun. So, so, gang. We're going to talk a little bit about, you know, getting from zero to 100 in the passion economy. Now. I would be a full admission because I don't want anybody to say I don't say what I say and I don't mean what I say. I absolutely 100% adore the mission. I'm just keep, I'm I'm just keep, I'm just keep. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely adore the mission. But I stated it before, I'll state it again. I'm not a fan of the label because in my head, and again, my head's weird, so it doesn't matter what I think. In my head, I think it will make people think 
you have to have a certain set of skills or a certain connection to your passion in order to move the needle. I'm from the school of motivation is bull. It's dumb. If you're not motivated, you just don't want to do it, right? There are certain things in life that are the best thing in the world for you, and sometimes you don't feel like doing it. And it's like, oh, what do you mean? I'm like, bro, you're hungry. Body hungry, but tired. You sit in the chair going, I know I should get up and eat, but I don't feel like it. And so you stay there and sometimes just go straight to sleep and get up the next morning starving. But the, the quote-unquote motivation to do what your body needs, which is feed itself, which is literally, for most people, I live in Hawaii, so it's only like eight feet across the room. Maybe in the, in the U.S. mainland, houses are bigger. It's 50 feet across the room. For us, it's actually there because <laughs> like, our houses are small. <laughs> and you'll just be like, nope, I'm going to sit right here. I'm not getting up. I'm just sitting here and wallow in the briar rather than go get food. So, yes, that's why I say motivation is BS. Um, so, yeah, the the mission and stuff completely expected. But I just wanted to be clear that I have publicly said I just don't like labels. But I, I yeah. like what it is. Yeah, I get like it. a cup of water is a cup of water. You could call it cheese. It's still water. Yeah. Okay. So explain the. Uh, I agree. <laughs> explain it to your. <laughs> Explain it to the way that you're using it to fire up so many people because they come back raving. Oh my God, this is what I want to do. <laughs> Heather finally That's woke funny. me up. Um, okay, cool. So I'll try to make this short. Um, and I think the people who have heard me talk about it before know that this is a, a work in progress in terms of me trying to explain it succinctly. But let me, to, <laughs> to, for brevity's sake, right? So here's, here's how this came about. Um, I'm definitely not the person to credit with calling it the passion economy. Uh, I, I just use the label that's already been used. So here's how I discovered it. There's a guy named Adam Davidson. He's a journalist, economist. He was covering stuff. You know, he's been a journalist covering the business economy for decades at this point. And uh, he started to, to see a shift in, in the, the workforce and the economy where we were going from everyone is a commodity working for the man, right? Like you're just, you are just a person who's filling a job description that a company has come up with for their goals, right? So it's like, we don't really care who the person is, but they need to be able to do, meet these qualifications and do these you know, this job description, and they're good. If they can do more than that, great. But we are determining, based on our needs as a company, who needs to be working here. That's, that makes sense. That's what he was discovering. And the trend... Yo, sorry. What the heck? <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Ned, like... <laughs> and then the trend it, was starting... <laughs> the, the trend was starting to shift where... We were starting to see businesses really thrive by leaning into their individuality. So you started to see businesses that like, it's because they're different, they're able to do, they're able to thrive, right? Like they're able to see success. And it's not only from the business standpoint or the entrepreneur standpoint, but also from the consumer standpoint, they were starting to see like, okay, we don't just want toothpaste we want the like i don't know the vegan animal friendly environmentally conscious brand to give us that kind of toothpaste because it's in line with our values it's you know it's what we support blah -dee -da, -dee da so that was the economy that's like outside of content creation on the other side there's legion she's an investor in the tech startup world and she was starting to see a trend where you know we've we had the uber the Ubers of the world, the Amazon, um, the Amazon drivers and stuff like that. But she was starting to see tech startups pop up that were catering to this shift in leaning into someone's individuality. So here, here's an example. Um, you know, when you want to get an Uber, no one cares. Like you don't, you don't know who the Uber driver is going to be. You just know that you need to go from point A to point B. So you just, you know, turn on the app and go. The apps that were that are now starting to pop up are there's this app called Dumpling, which is a personal grocer app. So we have something like Postmates where it's like, hey, can you get me a gallon of milk at you know the, the grocery? This is, you, you know the grocer who's gonna do this, right? Like you build a relationship with them. They know your 
food allergies. They know your food preferences. They know the brands that you like. So it's like you tell them, yeah, I want a gallon of milk, but they know exactly like which one to get. They'll check the date for you to make sure it's the freshest one. And you shop with them forever, right? Like now nice. they become your personal shopper. So it's that differentiation. And when I discovered it, I was like, we can apply this to content creation 100%. because content creation is the fastest growing type of small business. And for better or worse, the most popular way of succeeding as a content creator is by amassing as many subscribers and views as possible and monetizing off of ads, sponsorships, and affiliate, which is totally cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But I was starting to, I guess it, it really was from like maybe personal insecurity because that's just <laughs> that's just how I work. But I was like, okay, I've been doing this for five years. I barely crossed the 10K mark. I, I have come to terms with like, I don't have mass appeal. I really don't see myself ever getting a silver or gold play button, but that's not, you know, that's not because I don't have like self-esteem. That's just, that's just me being really self-aware and practical, but I'm, I, I am successful in like how I define it. I have my own business. I've built up a clientele from my YouTube channel. I met the love of my life from my YouTube channel. Like my YouTube channel, despite a relatively meager size in the grand scheme of things has, you know, given me the life that I would have I could have only dreamed of. And right. so basically, when I say passion economy, it's only because Adam Davidson and Lee Jin use that term. I don't care what it is, but I when I talk about it, I'm describing this certain type of business model where you know, you don't you can see success on YouTube where you're not having to constantly chase numbers. And I do think it's important to make the differentiation because the way that you would chase volume versus the way that you would chase depth is a totally different approach. Like 100%. Uh, for sure. If you, you know, sat me and Daryl Eves in a room, we would just have different ways of going about it, which is, you know, not one is better than the other, but I didn't see anyone advocating for this way of doing it. So that's why I'm super excited. See, see, that's it. why this is super cool. Cause I'm with you. All right. I have yeah. amassed, to me, amazing success. And we had this conversation yesterday a little bit, Miss D and I, because yeah. people would be like, man, you're killing it. Why do you have more subscribers? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if you know how YouTube works. And get no excuse whatsoever, but if you're melanated, it just takes longer, period, right? Because just whatever, like, like sort of part of it is imposter syndrome. We do it to ourselves. Part of it is there's people that just won't take our word for it the way they would someone else. There's um, literally, but it doesn't matter because I've amassed amazing success, right? I sit here as a YouTuber for uh, 15 years in the making, right? I loaded my first video two weeks after YouTube came up. Then I disappeared for like a year. So I don't really count that first year. Um, but <laughs> um, when I came back, it was just a holding point. Like I made this cool video, boom, stick it over here. I made this other cool video, boom, stick it over here. And then Miss D and I, see, I forgot about this, Heather. This is funny. Miss D and I discovered in a, in a chat the other day that I I know what happened to my missing years. All of us bougie filmmakers who had dope equipment and hated what YouTube was doing to our stuff, we all went to Vimeo. Yeah, I, looked, I, I went to that. I went to my <laughs> Vimeo channel that I completely forgot about, but it was like uh, Philip Bloom and all of us cool yeah. guys. Because like, okay, when I started shooting my original stuff, I came from selling broadcast cameras, right? I was the Hawaii version of B&H with my family, my brother June, who you see in the community and stuff like that. So we were selling like the PD-150s. Uh, we were selling like Sony had a little camera called the 900 back in the day, which was super dope. And I don't know if many people remember that Sony had a camera that you shot like this. It was super ignorant. <laughs> it was called oh, the PC9, yeah, yeah. the little box. Like, yeah. you know, I was running around shooting on that, doing uh, race you know, uh, race related stuff, not people, but so I used to come to Pomona every year, which is why I know your area because we used to fly through there at like 130 miles an hour on the freeway. Uh, cause the <laughs> only place you could cut, you can't cut loose like that here in Hawaii. Cause you would hit something, but like yeah. in, in Cali, you know, wide open freeway, we would just yep. be out there like hitting <laughs> switches, you know, San Gabriel Valley. Um, a couple of my homies, they went to, uh, UCI, uh, you know, it's 
Cal Irvine, but we say University of Civics and Integris because, you know. Yeah, was, I went there. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I you know, that's the yeah. street racing scene. So the Autobots, all the guys with the little Transformers on their car, you saw the Transformers stickers probably when you were in school. That's all my homies. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the kids that's that I, I, I came up racing with. And, yeah. Um, so funny, we were all on Vimeo because Vimeo had the quality. It was looking yeah. dope. I go back, I'm looking at some of my Vimeo videos. I am shooting this stuff with super high-end cameras. I have podcasts I'm shooting with like an $8,000 mic, you know, because we were just flexing because it was Vimeo. Whereas YouTube, it would have been a waste because you wouldn't have heard it. You know, it came right. out of one yeah, side like, like, like mm-hmm. Heather today. I'm joking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm clouded. I'm clouded. Um, so, yeah, when you realize that, you know, it's taking this long, but in that time space, I think I'm doing extremely well um, for what I'm doing. I have creators that are definitely out there trying to figure out how they're going to monetize and do this and do that. And I'm like, yeah, you, there's other ways to do this. Right. And you know, the consultancy part is there. Uh, you know, there's merch as we both sit here, flexing some doc cotton. Thank you, Sylvia and Andrew. I love you guys. Um, there's your affiliate possibilities. I was just conversating with a friend this morning. I'm like, bruh, if you're not paying attention to the affiliate game, you're really slipping, especially when you're showing them affiliate programs to things that function really well and help you. I don't mean like some creators slinging every HDMI cable and all these <laughs> other things. Um, it's getting irritated. And, you know, I was listening to Tom the other day yeah. and I wanted to reach through the screen and just sit him down and shake him softly and be like, little brother, let me explain something to you. Never mind the dumb stuff the idiots say to you about your deals because they're just jealous. They don't have it. It has nothing to do with you. You're the nicest human being in the world. Anybody that thinks you're untrustworthy needs to bounce anyway because he's the last person. Like, he's (laughs) almost, he's so good, I kind of want him to go and, like, mess up a shelf and walk out the store. (laughs) (laughs) I, I want pay to see that. I want, I, I can't, Tom, I love you. I want you to park crooked. I just go to the parking lot, <laughs> park crooked. Damn it. I want you to buy the milk. That's going to expire in two days. <laughs> like, like do something. I want you to just cross oh, eye somebody when they drive by, you know? So I, I was like, man, it's, it's such a beautiful human being, but if it's affecting his creativity, that bot, I took it personal. I like kind of want to go to the comments and find out who said that at the time and then send them a piece of my message because that's unfair. That is completely unfair. But the other side of it is it's world is straight. It is unfair. So it's just a matter of how you perceive it. And I am jaded. So I'm, I'm kind of happy that he's not jaded yet. I'm kind of in a way, part of me is happy that that bothers him. The other part of me is like, don't let that bother you. You're way too dope to let some, yeah ignorant person bother you when i was in hip-hop because we were being played on the radio all the underground hip-hop people used to just clown us and say dumb stuff but while they were clowning us i was opening up for like public enemy run dmc you know nw i was opening up for all the major hip-hop acts because we sold out so i'll take the sellout driving in my new car you catching the bus to the studio yeah, I mean, I think it's I think that YouTube culture has evolved where people realize it's like any troll is now just calling themselves out as a troll because the the community will see that comment and just be like you have no place here. You've no idea what you're talking about. You're just, you know, you're just making yourself look bad. You know, and there's really like uh, Tom is going to ponder about it because he's Tom and he, you know, is a beautiful human being. Yeah, <laughs> but I, but also I'm just like this guy clearly is just like has no has never watched your video before like you know yeah yeah it's it's it kind of it's kind of funny I definitely think the cutest thing ever was your guys is um come back from anniversary show and you guys were telling your story and like the, the like the whole missed opportunities I'm like this is '80s rom com like this is every <laughs> Cohen Brothers '80s rom com ever written. Is so funny, and yeah, but that's what makes you guys great is because, and I think this is what makes your circle love you. Uh, my brother Alicio always says your vibe attracts your tribe. 
because you guys are that genuine and coming from a wholesome spot, it's easy to believe in what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I just, I just don't, I mean, you already know, cause this is your mission on a daily basis. You can't let someone else saying things to you, take you out of your money. Right. I have had tons of people talk me out of my bag over the years. And so I, I sit here pushing, you know, 55 going, yeah, I'm never letting anyone ever talk me out of my bag ever again. You know, yeah, and, and that's how the last year and a half has made my thing blow because I yeah. finally got in. Right. Um, and, and for me, what it was and maybe, you you know, you're in a similar boat. I had family members, friends, people that genuinely love me, like, you know, do really like YouTube, like, aren't you too old to do that? You know, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I would second guess myself, of even course. though no one, no one that knows me now would ever think I'm the type of person to second guess myself. But yeah, I'll be sitting there like, yeah, should I make this video? Or actually I would be like, if I make this, will anybody I know see it and then come and say something or I've been known as a tech writer. I've been known as a Mac genius. Like I worked in my community. If I say the spec wrong, like what what's going to happen to me? I can't say specs wrong, right? People are going to come after me, you know, because I'm a known quantity in the Mac space. And then yeah. I made a video about um, Thunderbolt hubs, and I said Apple Silicon, <laughs> still Apple Silicon. <laughs> now, when they harass me in the comments, I go, yeah, I live in Hawaii, Silicon everywhere, bro. It's the beach. <laughs> and I'm just like, sorry, I was <laughs> I was sidetracked by the beauty of where I live. Where you live with your mama in the basement. Back off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know how you feel. I think that's like where I would say my specialty is is like if there's anyone who's ever felt any kind of hesitation, that 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 was me for most of my five years on YouTube. And it's honestly why I'm so passionate about the passion economy business model, because it's like it's just constant, like, I'm not good enough. I'm not seeing success the way that everyone is, is telling me that I'm supposed to, or, you know, it, it, it's just a lot of like, okay, I'm just going to do what feels right, even though what feels right seems wrong. And that is actually the key <laughs> to succeeding using this business model. And I, that's why I'm so excited about it. Um, but yeah, totally. I think, uh, especially as a content creator, regardless of how you want to monetize or regardless of if you want to monetize at all, everyone's going to have an opinion of you creating content and putting it out there. So it really is like, okay, who, who am I going to listen to that honestly has my best interests? Like, of course people care. Like my mom and dad, we didn't talk for a year because they wanted me, when I quit my job to, to embark on this journey, they were like, go back to your successful marketing career. You are in your 30s. You need to think about your career. You just got a car. You need to, you know, find a husband. All, you know, you need to be doing the path and whatever. And I was just like, and I felt, I felt bad. You know, I'm, I'm first generation here. Like they immigrated here for me. And I was just like, peace. I'm going to pave my own path. And so I, you know, we had, we had to stop talking. Now they get it because, you know, my, even my mom was like excited that I was going to be on your stream. Uh, they get it now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Aww. she's watching, but, uh, it's definitely like, you know, I think that it's still new. I think this is all still so new. And I think that people who are, who are poo-pooing it are really going to have a wake up call at some point when they realize that they're the ones who are missing out completely. And, and what's cool about this is that anybody, anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. It doesn't matter what your experience, your background, there's no degree that you need to get. There's not even like, you know, a, a, a base equipment list. You could start with what you have and everyone has enough to get started. So true yeah. story. And, and I think that's a thing too. And it's funny because we come off as, you know, everyone says, oh, you guys are the bougie gear guys, whatever. I go, because you never saw me doing it the dirty way. Go look at the old videos, bro. Go look at the iPhone 4 videos. They exist. I mean, it takes a while to scroll down, um, you know, close to 500 videos deep. And again, I've been on the platform since 06. So, yeah, it's going to take you a minute to get to the bottom. But they're there and they're crusty. And Miss D, she'll pull them up every once in a while to make fun of me. I'm like, damn it, Miss D, stop showing people that, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's I'm not afraid for people to see that because I want people to know this is a long time coming. But also, yeah. 
it's a different space, right? When you go to, I look at somebody like Keith, who just popped up in a channel up here somewhere. Uh, Pastor Keith, where'd you go? There he is. Bing, bing, who finally fixed this thing so we can call him in the convo. When you come in, you see him and like, oh, he sounds great. His, his, his audio is so perfect. Like, how does he sound so great? He got Grammys, ding dong. He been in this business forever. <laughs> and yes, he's a new creator, but he's not a new creator. Right. There's mm -hmm. a difference. Dude, dude's been making tracks when you can only buy it on cassette. So he know what he's doing. That's just that. Well, right. See, the camera guys are the same way. Like some of them guys have been on camera since they're kids. They're not new to that YouTube thing. So you can't look yeah. at their you can't even look at anyone's any position, in any journey. Like I used to say and then I'll, I'll, I'm going to be like Kanye and then I'll let you speak. Um, <laughs> I used to say never compare your middle to some. I mean, never compare your beginning yeah. to someone else's middle. But some people are going to be able to begin out of the gate, right? One of our one of our newest uh, members to the screen, he just started streaming a little bit ago, but he got all the things. How come? He's a retired NFL player. He got it like yeah. that. He just yeah. walked into b and give me half that store. Boom. And then have somebody set him up. And then he looks dope. And he just comes out the gate. So get in where you fit in, you know. Anyway, sorry, Heather. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think – what we are seeing right okay let me let me speak for myself what i'm seeing is almost like a a segmentation maybe or or it's it's almost like here's the world of youtube and it's starting to break off into different branches i guess and yes there's the filmmaker 4k you know you guys are hearing me in mono because i have no idea like how to fix it like Yes, there is a, a, a side of the spectrum where everything can be like super crystal clear and like, you know, everything and just looks and sounds amazing. But for the people who especially are taking the passion economy business model where YouTube is a means to an end, like you, you don't have to have the crystal clear because that's, it, it's a means to an end, right? Like you just need to deliver the content and build up the community. And whether you're 1080 or 4K or mono versus stereo like that that's not that's not really going to help um that helps on the margins right but that's not going to make the transformational impact that just like you creating content and just getting out of your own way is going to make like that's going to make more of an impact on your community than anything else 100%. and I, I think that i think that's because the culture is shifting where you know, maybe maybe that was the expectation before, but I think especially after last year, uh, I, I, the guest that I just had on on uh, my podcast from one to one hundred, Dominic, last Tuesday, Dominique. Yeah, I mean, he just switched from PC to Mac. What a month ago to to get up on the Ecam fam situation. <laughs> you know, like now now I think we're gonna you know check in on his channel six months from now. Every it's gonna look look and sound amazing but he didn't have that from the get-go and he's wildly successful sub 10k subscribers i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing at your mans over here get your mans what's out he here. saying say, i got a jaywalking <laughs> ticket once <laughs> <laughs> tom little brother i love you you're the, you're the man <laughs> and loria thank you for stopping by loria we're so so excited to have you she and i were cracking up on her stream yesterday so much like i had to do my demo and my cheeks were sore because i was laughing so hard the entire time oh. on her stream and we were talking about mics it was a serious conversation but lp makes me laugh and then every time i go on her show i have such a good time I feel Aww. like there should be drinking involved, though. I'm just saying. But maybe that's just me. <laughs> so It's the late night live Callie! streaming pros. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Callie. I really appreciate you. And then uh, Mr. Keith is here. Everyone's saying hi to everybody. He's busting out his Spanish, so, oh, this is dangerous. He, he worked with Will Smith on one track, and then now he speaks Spanish. This is funny. <laughs> uh, you know, one thing that I guess everyone comes up with, right, and, you know, the most common statement is I'm afraid or I'm not ready or I'm, you know, not this or not that. What it, what would you say is your secret to just ripping the bandaid in doing it? Or did you have to talk yourself into it? And, and again, you know, the content was always good, 
But even like going all the way back to the four years ago, you know, Heather just create videos where you're just getting started or whatever. Um, the one thing you brought to the table early, vulnerability. The one thing you bring to the table right now, vulnerability. Like you ride in that, and I think it's dope. <laughs> I think everybody should. Cause I do as well. Like I have known to bust out in tears on the stream or whatever. And, yeah. and and they were like, oh, why he out here crying? Yo, I'm six foot two fifty. I would shed a tear and beat your ass. So <laughs> I'm like, sorry. I'm a I grew up in a house full of women. I'm a sensitive dude. Whatever. Uh, and then of course, um, Brett Collins and and uh, one of our other friends he says, yeah, just after fifty you start crying. So <laughs> there's there's that there's that as well. But yeah, like what is it about you that makes it? I guess easy for you. I shouldn't say easy. Make it a decision for you to just come pure vulnerable. So I don't know how to do it any other way. Ooh, Seriously, just like I just, it, yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, it's just, it's harder. It's harder for me to to not. You know, and, and I and I think that there's things I have to work on. Like you know, I was just editing my podcast, and I can't. I'm so mad because I I put my the the episode with Dominique into Descript, and it counted how many filler words were in there. Six hundred twenty three, and like you know, it's stuff like that that my vulnerability or just the way that I am. I can I can help you with filler annoyed. words. I was a radio guy. I can completely help. Oh, you see, with there words. you go. I have a dope oh. secret for filler words. I believe I yeah. made a video on the channel. Or maybe I did it in the live stream. I do my filler words in this gigantic wrinkly melon. So when you see me do the Obama pause, that's the back of my throat is going. Mm, uh, <laughs> mm. So when I'm in the middle of talking and then I'll, I just move to the next sentence, do the right up look, whatever. Those are me doing filler words. I just yeah. eat them. I eat the filler words for breakfast. And I have to embrace silence. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. the silence. Enjoy <laughs> the silence. Strange to my heart. Sorry. I'm going to get a content straight. Uh, man, you can't get it. If you sing <laughs> bad, it can't figure it out. So, hey. Um, yes, that has been my secret forever. I learned it from a OG radio guy back when I was, um, when we first got bought by Clear Channel, which was the time for me to go. Like, I can't, never mind. Um, <laughs> he came to us. And you heard his voice on all kind of, uh, you know, the station IDs when you're like, you're listening to the sound of mm -hmm. WBUCK. That's too many letters. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, when you you hear that guy, this guy named St. John, he's a famous voice in lots of stations all over. And he was the one that told me to just eat your filler words, spend a lot of time practicing, spend a lot of time talking. And one thing you can do to help yourself, which is why I use the day one journal app for my watch. And then for my phone, I do type in it a lot. I do write in it a lot with my Apple pencil and my pad, but you can, if you have a watch, you can record into the day one app, your journal, and then use that as your place to pl practice. Use that as your, pr yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, the purple. Exactly. Practice. <laughs> Use it as a place to practice your um eating in as you're talking to your journal. And it will just, it will help you. That's the fastest and best way to do it. And the script will catch a couple for me here and there, but I would definitely say I'm normally under 10. Oh, good for you. I aspire to be that. You can do it. You can do it. You, every, I tell everyone that, like, once you learn that trick, it's so much helpful. And you know where it comes in the best? The best place to learn silence is in negotiation. So mm. my favorite time when I'm negotiating a deal with someone and I start and stop a sentence where it looks like I'm struggling to pull the next thought, they normally will say something ignorant in the middle and hang themselves. And I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Chris Voss, another person to listen to for negotiations. I learned it in the Army when we're trying to, you know, get secrets out of people. But... <laughs> They're like, you know, we were thinking about paying you 10K for this deal. And you go, so let me just double check the numbers here. And you got your pencil in your hand, you know, you're like, so you're thinking of something like 10. What about 15? Oh, oh 15. Let me, uh, let me write this down real quick. 
15 uh well, how about you give us a number i was thinking like 28 and they're like i don't know if i could do 28 and they're like mm, how about 22 and i'm like done i came in with eight in the head <laughs> yeah you know what I'm saying? So, like, I have completely done that. And people cannot do the pregnant pause. They cannot stand it. They cannot They cannot deal with it. It's just something about it's human habit. beings. It's a habit I need to break, too. Yeah. yeah. Mommy, if you get that one figured out, you would be like, oh, Hercules, the first time you catch one, <laughs> you will moonwalk across your room. Dog going to look at you like, what's wrong with her? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the one. If you can catch that one, it will save you. So, yes, get 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 used to that. Um, and see, now you just made me say it. The other thing <laughs> that I think is amazing is, and I think this helps you, honestly, when you guys get together and you do your couple's table, right, I think it helps you show people that it's cool to be human on your joint. Like when you do your, that show, particularly you guys are just raw and that's what everybody loves. Then you'll catch yourself and you'll be like, wait, I'm going to deep. I was like, yeah, okay. But that's the rawness that everybody loves about you. So I, I, if it was me, I want you guys to stop apologizing for being real. You guys are <laughs> dope. Like more people should be real and more people should come correct. And something I never would have done before. And honestly, I'm not going to sit here and say I've been doing this for 50 years or whatever. My willingness to be real and raw on this started in December. Because the second day of Vlogmas, Sylvia and Andrew, Preston So and Sylvia Nixon down there hit me up and says, man, we really love what you're doing with the group. We want to produce purple Vlogmas shirts for you to give to the Alzheimer's, you know, association, because this is why I'm purple, right? I'm, I'm about the Alzheimer's association because I have a parent on both sides that are dealing with the struggle and the struggle is real. Right. So I, I means a lot to me. And in the middle of me trying to explain that to people in Vogman's trying to tear people up so they can go buy shirts. Cause it'd be dope for the mission. I just broke out. And then I was over Aww. there and then, you know what? And nobody gave a crap. So yep. even though I'm the drill sergeant, you know, when it comes to yelling at people about their content, yelling at people about their excuses and all of that, yo, I will get a box of Kleenex in a heartbeat, you yeah. know? Yeah. And see that that's, that's why like, it's a longer process. I think being real because it's not, you know, it's not, I don't want to say clickbait, but it's definitely not something that like gets the views or whatever. I mean, I guess people like the drama, but when you're real, cultivating a, a, a genuine relationship with anybody takes time, right? And to do that with people over the internet is going to take even longer, especially if you're doing YouTube. It just takes time. And I don't want anybody to feel like because their progress may seem slower than what we see through whatever that you are not also seeing success because you have no idea. You have no idea. Like, you you might be in the middle of a huge growth curve, but you're just too close to see it. Yeah. You're just too close. A hundred percent. You know, um, Loria asked the question. I'm not sure if she's still here because I'm, I'm on my Miss D level comments, like way the heck back. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Miss Diana. I love you. Um, honestly, doing this, becoming a full time creator, like going all the way in on creating. I have been uh, toe tapping getting into being a full-time creator since about 2012, 2013, actually 2013, 2013 was when I had a video go to 700 K and that was the time where it was time to double down and whatever. And it was like, Oh yeah. Um, you're, you're pushing 50 dude. You can't go in all as a YouTuber. Like all of these people are, or all the up and coming creators are young guys and new guys and whatever. And I was already in a partner program and everything. Cause I was, getting paid prior to partner program. And then when they turn partner program to go, your grandfather then funny term, uh, you're already in there. And it was like, yeah, my friends were like, your co-working business is doing fine. Uh, you're, you're killing it in the, the, the nightclub space. Like we we were just, I mean, everything was popping. The, uh, uh, every day I'm shuffling, uh, <laughs> a song was popular. So all our 
raves and concerts and stuff which is popping like why would you go in and be a full-time creator i'm like because those and gigs just keep stop bringing stop my, i keep hitting the roadcaster because i moved it because i thought it was buzzing i'll put you back where you normally go so i can stop hitting it um there you go i basically the business were doing so well i was like this is the perfect time to do it because i won't have to come from a position of need I come from a position of already, you know, comfortably making loot so I can just focus on the fun part of the content. And the other thing, and this is the funniest one, I was always Batman and Robin with someone, right? Mm -hmm. So in all of my podcasts, I always had a partner and things like that. And uh, back when I was doing my sake show, teaching people sake, like we were growing really well. Everything was doing good. When I was doing my Japanese lessons, I had two other partners. And they kept getting sidetracked. And then I just kept believing, well, like, maybe this can't be because I can't find a good partner. You're the best partner. You already talk to yourself 24-7 anyway. You are already two personalities. So, like, that's it. And then the funny part, Facebook outed me. I have been my persona, Doc Rock, forever. And then some troll told Facebook that they, they wanted me to put my name back to my real name. And I I lost it. I went through like a year battle with Facebook. Like there's reasons why we do it this way. There's a reason why all DJs primarily use pseudonyms and stuff like that, because we're high profile. Like we have had people come to the radio station and threaten to kill us because they didn't win a trip to Vegas, you know, just that's how it is. And for some reason, I don't know how, but that threw me off my game. I just, I was ready to just not do it anymore. Um, and so that's why Facebook, they settled. They let me put the doc in the middle because like nobody here mm. knows me by the government. Like most of my closest friends and family don't even call me that. The doc I got all the way when I was a little kid, my grandmother used to call me that because I was the Y kid. Why, 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 why? Mm. Hence the way I am today. I'm still oh. the Y kid at my age, right? Mm-hmm. Me becoming a paramedic certified that doc part. And then the rock part is just because I was hardcore and just always wanted to do things extra over the top. You know, that that friend that's extra, that was me. In the Army, the person who's extra is called Sergeant Rock. So the Dr. Rock, that's where it came from. You know what I mean? Because medics are supposed to sit in the corner, have your little teeny pistol and do your thing. I'm over there. How do you fire this cannon? They're like, what? You're the medic. Man, I ask you that. How do you fire this cannon? Okay, here's how you do it. (laughs) da 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 like, how do you fly this helicopter? Dude, you're the medic. I don't care. How do you fly the helicopter? You know, like, I was this weirdo. So that's sort of how it came. And having, at that moment in time, like, the best part of YouTube expansion, YouTube explosion, was was just banging. And basically, at that time, the primary, like, say, black tech creator guys teaching tech was myself and Soldier. Soldier knows best. Marquez was brand spanking new. Yeah. And then I let my friends talk me out of it in the perfect spot for people to start looking for a person talking about tech that looked like them, but was still extremely knowledgeable into the tech area. And I walked away from it. And I'm not saying I made a hole for him, but he definitely came up. When Soldier and I both walked away at the same time. And I came back. I don't think Soldier ever came back. And both of us left for about the same reason. Was really sick of people saying ignorant stuff to me in the comments. Which, you know, I say as as a female, you know what it is, right? Like people would say the most ignorant stuff to females in the comments, and I'm like, bruh. Who and are like you? you know, I I definitely think that you need to understand like this being a content creator, putting yourself out there on the internet. There, there just has to be a, a skin, you know, a thickness of skin that you need to have. Uh, but the I just other made thing it is into like, fatness of skin. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is like, I think that people don't realize how much it's a specific kind of person, even though it seems like for those of us who are in this, it seems like there's a lot of us. But I think that we are rare. I think it's a rare person who wants to make YouTube videos. I think it's a, it's a person who, you know, not only wants to create something from nothing over and over and over again, feels like they have something worth sharing. And then also 
has the t the confidence to put themselves out there. I think that takes a certain person. And what is typical of that person is also second guessing yourself. I think that that many of us struggle with that, go through that. And what's annoying in, in this journey is like, you're second guessing yourself constantly already. Maybe you get over that if you're one of the lucky ones, but then when everyone else starts doing it too, it only validates the, the doubt that you have in your head, which is so, so annoying. But what I think is so exciting about jumping on the YouTube train right now, I think that now is like the perfect time because the culture is shifting. It's super cool. There's all these tech companies who want to help you on your journey. It's never been easier. It has never been easier to start and grow a YouTube channel for real. Like it's so easy. There's YouTube shorts now. You can start with 15 second content and make a, you know, make a whole thing. One of my clients, 75 years old, 75 years old to, you know, where every other person that I've met 55 and up is already already like, Oh, I, I, I don't know how to do the tech. I, I'm, you know, you're lucky cause you're young. So you know how to use this stuff. No, no, no. We all had to learn, right? Like you're just putting, Thank you. it's like you, you talk Thank about this all the time. You. It's you putting limiting, limiting beliefs on yourself. I don't think age demo, none of that. No, there's no barrier to entry. It is open for everyone. And it's, I, I feel like if you have the itch, or if you if you still have some doubt that's holding you back, get out of your own way. I promise you, you will thank yourself later. Who cares? Who cares? Like if you be you know get the silver play button or not? You don't need the silver play button for you to feel like this was worth it. You know, like uh, you know what? I agree with you there. Of this. I, I don't What's I don't want it to feel like a worth it. I just want it so that I can plaque people when they say something ignorant. <laughs> Shelly, Shelly and Viper talk about it all the time in our little chats. And then now I'm like, yes, now I want it. Now I want it just so I can absolutely plaque people. Well, how so like, you know, Tom will get plaqued before any of us. He's on the way, right? Yep, yeah, so that way yeah. when somebody goes, you know, well, how come you get to be the road guy and blah, blah, blah. They're just paying mm -hmm. you and you just go, bang. What? <laughs> huh? 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 You be like, Cletus, what'd you say, Cletus? Yeah, I just be like. It's like, oh, you just did that because blah blah. Skang, huh? Yeah, that's what I. That's all I want the plaque for. I just want to plaque people as a way of STF. I love this plaque people. I I didn't coin that. That comes from Viper and Shelly saved the day. They're the oh, ones that taught boy. me that, and I love it. Like Miss D and I both were immediately yes. I need the plaque. I not for no other reason. It's not about the number. I just want to be able to plaque people because people say dumb stuff to you, and yeah. It's funny. Oh, it's just super funny. Just like when people used to talk smack about something, you know, being a hood kid, like when I finally got a chance to go buy my little super sports car, when somebody say something and I'm just like, deet, deet. huh? Yeah. <laughs> Check the ride, Joe. <laughs> Check the ride. You know, uh, what time is it? Twist the little Rolex thing and be like, hey, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's petty. It's extremely petty. I know, but when you come from being told what you can't do, sometimes that, hey, you know what? Take that player that, that just gets to you. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm super sorry. I am super sorry. Uh, man, oh, Laurie said something that I wanted to say, and then I'm, I, I moved away from it. But um, the, the cool thing, you know, honestly, is the mission that you're doing and telling people to put these excuses away, right? I am on a mission yeah. right now to help people with the limiting beliefs. I want to take all the limiting beliefs away from people and limiting beliefs will manifest in very odd ways. Right? So the reason why I took umbrage with master buck the other day was because him saying that other people talking about his bag makes him feel bad in a way is a limiting belief because it's taking you off of doing what you are doing perfectly fine. Right. It starts to make you second guess yourself. Almost anything that makes you second guess yourself can be extremely limiting. So I'm mm -hmm. always pushing people to try to get rid of that because I did it to myself for years. So long. I, I, yeah. Because I'm a camera guy, I can't possibly shoot this show with an A6400, you know, like, why would I shoot an A6400? We got reds on the floor. You know how dumb it would be to live stream with a red? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it's dumb. But in my head, like, I never wanted to go out and shoot unless I could fire up the red. 
or unless I could fire up the Cine Alta or so. And I was like, nobody cared, bro. Nobody yeah. cared. And then as I was, you know, in, doing my knee surgery and I'm watching like D Nim and all his content, everything from a phone. I'm just like, Oh man. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. And Rob, thank you for putting this on the screen. I'm sorry. I am trying to like catch up. I am so far back, but that's because Heather is dropping knowledge and <laughs> we, we are just having a good time enjoying it. People, um, yeah, don't worry about the mono Heather again. This it's irrelevant. You know, I, I, people, I, I talked about this to our team before, and I know this is hard because right now, two people who will push you through all of the dumb you say to yourself about your channel are here giving you information yeah. and you hear a mono channel. And you go, oh, my God, I can't hear this. I can't hear this. That's right. the limiting belief right there. Okay? Mm -hmm. If I presented you, you in the desert, your ass is thirsty AF, and I go like this, you about to drink that. Right? I don't have to deliver it to you in the hydro flask with the... <laughs> you don't care. If I wring a freaking towel and the water yeah, drips yeah. into which your mouth and you go... You do not care because you're in the... She is in the desert. She know. It's hot as hell right now. It's probably close to 100 out there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when you go to a... And I mean this from the bottom of my cheeks. When you go to a stream and you start looking at stuff to pick apart what they're saying or doing while they're trying to tell you exactly what you need to hear to move the needle <laughs> from zero to 100, that is your limiting belief squawking right there. That is your limiting belief going... Oh, I can't possibly listen to this because it's coming in mono. Or I can't possibly listen to this because it's some fat old dude and some Filipino chick. Like, you know, <laughs> that's that's the stuff that's actually stopping people from doing what they need to do. And so I tell you, I tell my people, and they're hard-headed. I got to tell them over and over again. As good netizens, if it's something that can't be easily fixed, but it doesn't completely wreck the show, don't even right. talk about it. Just don't even bring it up, right? Yes, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's Heather. Don't really care. The info, you can hear. She only has one mouth. It doesn't come out stereo anyway, so the stereo is fake, <laughs> okay? Understand <laughs> audio, people. One lips has always been mono unless there's two microphones. So the stereo's fake anyway, so get over it. Take the other earphone out. You can still hear. There you go. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> that time I hit it on purpose. How you like that? All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm, I'm trying to catch up on some comments really quickly. Sorry, gang. We are like mad behind. But somebody had a good thing. Oh, I know what it was. K-Walk. K-Walk, someone who I love to absolute death. K-Walk wanted oh, yeah. to know about how you found your niche. And mine's super quick. Accident. Right. I've been doing tech, travel, lifestyle, tea, steak, grilling, cooking, baking, all the things I'm into, which is why my joke to Rob, uh, who defended your honor like a good knight about the passion kind <laughs> for me is that screws me because I got like eight, eleven hundred passions. Mm -hmm. I'm mad passionate about video, audio, uh, whiskey, Japanese, everything. So I want to get there. <laughs> so stara. Like that then in turn turns everything Japanese into a passion. I got the culinary stuff because I go to get custom knives made in the paper making, Japanese calligraphy, like anime, manga. It's not manga, damn it. Manga, manga. Say it with me not manga, not manga. Like anime, and as Miss D calls it, anime, like it's nef a niece or auntie. Um, yeah, so doing all of the myriad things, what I discovered while I was in the hospital recovering was hearing these YouTube people telling other YouTube people how to be better YouTube people. I was like, that's the one I could do that because I love to take away people's limiting beliefs from every other aspect of business. People pay me money to show up to their office and take them out of 
those beliefs. I have done motivational speaking and showed up at conferences and done, you know, team counseling, had a radio show for teams about it, like the whole nine yards. I'm like, that's the one. Done deal. That's it. For me, it's, it was, it was, I didn't know, because YouTube coaching wasn't a thing. Like, I mean, I think it was a thing for some, like, literally five channels when I started. Uh, but I didn't realize that I, like, that I could do this, right? And I think what happened was I I was vlogging and then as time went on, as I created more content and got more experience, people started to ask me questions. And I am a natural teacher, right? Like I, I just, I am super passionate about digital media. I care about this stuff. I'm excited about it. And so I, I feel like YouTube coaching was just eventually the end goal that I was going to get to, but I just didn't know it at the time. But the problem that I had was, oh, how, who am I to be a YouTube coach when I don't even have, you know, 10,000 subscribers? I just couldn't get over it. I could not get over that. And that's why I'm so, I will just bring it all back to the passion economy. I'm so excited about the passion economy because not, not that people who aren't using the passion economy business model aren't passionate, right? It's just what people are calling it. So I just, you know, that's what I use. But it's it's the idea of you you have some very specialized product or service that makes a transformational impact on somebody else and you are using YouTube to serve them, right? So it goes beyond, hey, I'm just going to make a bunch of videos and try to get as many people to watch it as possible and monetize off of attention and views. That's a great way to do it. That way to do it, I tried. I tried for five years to do it. And I'm not going to be honest, like the, the videos that I made purely because that's what my YouTube analytics were telling me was working. That's what I felt like was trending. I regretted all those videos. Like I unlisted yes. them. Straight straight yes. up, I had like over a million views on my channel, and now it, I think, I don't know, it dipped when I unlisted them because I unlisted my most popular videos because they were just bringing in the wrong people. It was the wrong people, nothing against them, but that's it, they weren't in line with my overall mission. And in the passion economy, it has, you cannot, like authenticity is a word that gets thrown away or thrown around a lot, but literally, like if you are trying to be anyone but yourself, it's not gonna work you aren't gonna be able to do this because the goal is long term we're here forever if possible that's what we want to do right we want to align what we're passionate about to the way that we're gonna make money not necessarily that we want to be a millionaire but if we can make a living yeah, hey, stop. Doing what we love, stop. Stop, 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 stop 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 yes you do <laughs> don't lie to yourself oh yes, a millionaire no, no, past that, actually, past that, to the moon. Like, hold the door to the moon, that's a joke. Um, yeah, past that. Don't do that to yourself. Because, see, I caught you were doing so fine. And he went limiting. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, Heather, don't say that. Don't let it come out your mouth, because that is the breaks that will break you. I know what you mean, but, yeah, that's one of those filler words you got to eat. Like, and I know it's not about the money. And yeah. you don't have to be, because when you're giving everyone what it is that they need, that part's automatic. I didn't straight up, didn't really catch that. I've known it. I've coached it. I've taught it. I didn't really catch it fully until like the last four or five years. And then my giving session has been working thus far. I'm going to keep it that way. But don't put any breaks on your thing because here's what happened. People will start looking at like, oh, well, they're making so much money off of it. They must be doing something jacked up. And because you're not, you'll start taking it personal and then you'll start messing with your bag. You know, I think it's like, it's more the way that I'm thinking about it is more of like, there are so many ways there are easier ways to make more money, Oh, honey, but I'm saying no it. to that because yeah, yeah like, okay. I, I, I would rather focus on, on creating something that, is going to serve me and my people long term and that's honestly that's saying no to a lot of clients that's saying no to a lot of opportunities because it's just not the right fit right so not that i don't want to be a millionaire that would be okay. great that's better but because <laughs> then you guys yeah, can come but... to hawaii more often and you know hang out <laughs> for sure you know, dude you bring oh, the yeah. dogs I mean, like, too I'm... right <laughs> you know Os osaka and the, and the boys can run around and wreak havoc and like doodle all over the beach <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here's yeah. a here's a thing 
that, um, man, there were so many bombs in that, folks. I don't know if you guys are paying attention to what Heather is explaining to you. There are so many bombs in that in that whole session right there. Um, the key to it, right, is knowing what you love and coming in and doing it, but also being afraid to walk away from things that don't fit. Things that don't fit actually fill your plate. And when they fill your plate, you got no more room for that side of mac and cheese. Now, you filled your plate before you got to the mac and cheese. You up hardcore because that mac and cheese is life. You know what I'm saying? So you got... No, you, now, now somebody's gonna be like, but I'm like doing intolerant. Shut up. You know what the <laughs> you understand. Two, so two things for that <laughs> right there. Real practical tips that I think anyone that I think would be really, really helpful and save you a lot of time, honestly. Two real practical tips is anytime an opportunity comes your way, whether that's a potential client, that's a you know, a company reaching out for a sponsorship, that's someone who wants to collab, whatever the opportunity is. Always, always, always give yourself at least 24 hours before responding. I promise you, you might feel different after sleeping on it. And I have said yes on a whim instantly to so many things that I was like, ah, you know what? Maybe that's not the right thing or whatever after I slept on it. Uh, so that's one. And then two is if it's not a clear yes, it's a clear no. That's uh, Essentialism by Greg McKeown. McKeown? Yeah. Um me too. It's not a clear yes. It's a clear. It's a clear no. So if you're hesitating, I, there are, there are, there will be opportunities that drop on your doorstep, and you're like, oh my god, this is what I've been waiting for. Yes, a thousand percent. The you know when Tom reached out, and wanted me immediately. I, I didn't even I didn't even know that that was gonna be my future husband, but we were just on the same wavelength that I was like, yes, I will drive two and a half hours to meet you and talk and collab and whatever it is and then there's some that are like okay this sounds awesome and i feel like everyone would be like i want to say yes to that but it's just not if, if you feel any sense of hesitation even if you feel like it's something you're supposed to say yes to give it 24 hours and then see how you feel and then maybe it's not your thing that man true words have never been told uh when i broke my ankle the worst way I hesitated and I thought to myself nah I don't do it and then I went you doc rock F that go for it crack ah, woo! Ah. <laughs> the leg oh, no. jacked up forever like and I tell people this all the time like every time you about to do something ignorant your brain would come in and be like hey now are you sure <laughs> you do it? It's defense. And, it's like yeah, the natural your defense. Your brain is system. designed to protect mm -hmm. you. But also because your brain is designed to protect you, it will make you not do things you should do yep. because keep it's, you in the comfort it's, zone. <laughs> it's designed to protect you. People's like, well, I'm just trying to live comfortable. And I'm like, no, how about you? No, comfort is where you die. Don't die in the comfort zone. You got to get mm -hmm. out there. Uh, funny, funny uh, thing. I, I mention to people all the time, and this is why I try to get, you know, deep with people when they start talking about the money side of this, per se. Um, First of all, I had to pump the brakes. India Delgado, damn it, don't slide up in the DMs and start like chat-chat-chat-chat-chat. I, I miss you, sis. Anyway, good to see you. <laughs> India <laughs> came through. I A, and she's going to hate me. India, America, good to see you, mom. Um, I had a friend running a business and I was doing some business consulting and my consultancy is based around efficiency and helping people sort of be walk in tech instead of being afraid of tech. Cause I cannot stand, I'm not a tech person. Neither am I. I'm yeah. a person. Oh my gosh. I'm a person. Yeah. I am not an anything person. I'm just a person. Mm -hmm. Cause I could change my mind tomorrow, throw all these computers in the ocean, go live in the mountains in Japan and never be seen again. Does that make me a tech person? No, I was a weird dude that went to the mountain in Hokkaido not to be seen. And it's okay. I'm cool with it. Like I can ikigai. Like I can sit there, drink my tea, and just, and I'll be completely cool with that. <laughs> so I don't like that tech person type thing. My yeah. identity was never tied to me being an on air personality, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I guess maybe I kind of switched it from TV and radio to YouTube. But my identity was never tied to that. My identity was never tied to, you know, street racer. Um, I was a street racer, but that's not my ID. My ID is I'm just doc, right? I'm just a regular dude that likes all kind of things. Unfortunately, most of them are expensive. But, hey, I picked those two habits. So 
<laughs> our friends in his business, I'll call it plumbing, not just to change the story so he don't hear me and be embarrassed. Doing really well. He's making like a million dollars a year, you know, he's killing it. And so I come in, I was helping him do some stuff. And I was like, bruh, do you know, we I, we can go to the store right now and get you like three more computers. I can set this up to automate this task, set this up to automate this task. And by all calculations, seeing some other efficiencies that you're lacking, we probably spend like about, mm, I'm going to say like 15 grand, but I guarantee you, you're going to turn your million in a year to about 9 million a year, just because you're, you're jacking up some of these efficiencies, doing things by hand. Yeah. And his answer was sure as grits as groceries. Yeah. I don't do that. We kind of cool. We comfortable. Kids go to private school, house paid for, no bills, whatever. Million dollars is fine. And I was like, we're done. And he was like, what? We've been friends for years. I go, yeah, we're done. And I'm like, why? I'm like, you're a dick. And he's <laughs> like, what? I go, you're an absolute dick. And he's like, why? I'm like, bruh, you're sitting here. You're comfortable. You're good, right? And he's like, yeah. First of all, you asked me to come over and help you. And I would straight come to help you free just because you're my homie. First of all, I should charge you even more than I charge my other clients. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I did it out of love because we're brothers, you know. But then, imagine, I just told you to do something that we could finish this afternoon that will pump your business from a million a year to about nine million a year. And you said no because you're comfortable. And he's like, yeah, but, you know, I was like, no, shut up. I'm speaking. Imagine what it would feel like because you call yourself a Christian. I'm an atheist. I'm the heathen. But you call yourself a Christian. So imagine giving away $8 million a year. <laughs> we ain't spoke since because he couldn't handle the truth. His business yeah. is exactly where it was. They're still doing dope. He's probably at about a million and a half right now. But he, he didn't receive that. Could you imagine how your heart would feel, right? Then the, I swear to you, a couple years ago, I was super pissed off. I was about to go to his house and actually fight, but I ate it. Posted on the book face, complaining about the homeless problem and how they're set up across the street from his shop and how they're making the shop look bad. And I just wanted to go and grab him and be like, mother, you could have solved the homeless problem. Yeah, yeah. If you listen to what I told you, which would have been like 10% work for like a month, and then the rest would have just fell into place. You would have been able to hire folks. You would have expanded. I mean, to go from there to there, he would have had to hire like a bunch of people, but I'm afraid to hire people to sell shit. I'm afraid to put in extra work. So yeah, that's why I don't like when people give themselves limiting beliefs while they're calling themselves what they're calling themselves. And yeah. like, you're holding it back. Right. I, all of the people out there talking about the reason why we got to have this law this way and this law this way, because we got to keep the wholesome and the family values and whatever. And they're sitting up in their big ivory castle. But what are you doing to go down and pick those people up? Because you're telling everybody on TV every night that you are pious and wholesome and you making all this money. But I haven't seen you go down and help out the other people. Oh, no, because that's for my family. I don't think the person that you talk about is your Lord and Savior would have kept it in the Bentley. I think he would have went down to fed folks at the river and the fish and the net and all of that. You know, don't get me started. I like to put them in their place because I know more about it than half the people that claim it. Anyway, um, yeah, so that, that bothers me. I guess before we leave you stuck here all day, uh, cause I, we can do this. Um, and I got to prepare for class and I don't want to, I want you to walk the dog and feed <laughs> Tom. He's probably mad. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, like seriously, what give, give us, give people a practical plan. I want folks to walk away here with homework from Heather. Ooh, that's, yeah. a, that's a hashtag homework from Heather. Oh, I like oh, that. That's cool. Write, write that down. <laughs> homework from Heather. Today, your homework from Heather is decaying. I love that. Uh, let's see. So here's my thing. If you want if you want to create content or you are creating content and for whatever reason something is holding you back and you're curious about the passion economy business model, um, I think, you know, 
I've said it before, the creator economy business model is, is the model of monetizing by creating content that everyone knows about. I encourage you as part of your homework to look at this other business model. And if you are someone who identifies with having a mission, right? The same way that a company has a mission, like they, they are driven, all businesses decisions are driven by the mission of the organization. What is your mission that you want to accomplish as an individual, as a person, as you know, whatever is in your reach, this is the impact that you're going to make with what you've, you know, the resource that you've got. What is your mission? If you are driven by some kind of mission, whether that's like, you know, you want to help people be more productive by using Notion, right? Or you want to help people share stories through YouTube, or you want to help, um, you know what I would love to see is a personal um, stylist. I would love to hire a personal stylist, right? Like you wanna help people, maybe content creators pick a wardrobe for on camera. Like that would be great. If you have like a personal mission that's like really specialized to what you love doing, there is a way that you could make money doing what you love by creating content. And it has nothing to do with having 1K, 5K, 10K silver play button subscribers. Don't let anyone tell you that you need to have a certain amount of views and a certain amount of subscribers for you to, to build a business around the thing that you love doing. And I think that this has never been possible before. You couldn't have done this 20 years ago because none of this existed. So if you want, if, if this piques your interest, I implore you, like, don't, don't let this pass you by right? Like this could totally be a something that starts out as a side thing that turns into the thing. Just like <laughs> Tom, my husband is a perfect example. Wait, he was a side his... thing that turned into the thing. I'm sorry. I just had to be a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> he is going to be blushing like crazy. <laughs> but you know, he was full-time teacher. And let me tell you, I, I'm sure you guys, if you know Tom, you would know that this is a man who was going to be in that career as a teacher till he retired. Like he's just, he's just a good guy that was going to do that. Luckily his subject of teaching was something where he could exercise creativity and his passion. That's awesome. But he started YouTube as like, this is fun. Let's, let's see, let's just see where it goes. And he was so embarrassed about it. He didn't tell anybody about his YouTube channel for a really long time. And bam, like now it's his full-time thing. And, you know, silver play buttons are on the corner for sure. Uh, so anyway, I'll get that's off the nice. soapbox. But just that that's no, my homework. That's, just like... that's that's the soapbox. Okay. Redefine <laughs> redefine the homework again real quick. Yeah, so look into the uh passion economy business model and then think about a thing that you can possibly offer that's transformational to somebody, right? So if you lead with with some kind of offering, product, service, whatever it is, that's where your creativity is. Because I can't tell you what the product's gonna be, that's up to you, right? There's so many uh, tools that can help you form that product, whether it's a community on Mighty Networks, whether it's an online course on Podio, whether it's, I don't know, t-shirts or something like that, whatever your product is that, that's really gonna make an impact on somebody. And then use YouTube to help you turn that thing into a business. I hope that's okay. homework. Is that homework? Is yeah, that's topic? homework. That's homework, man. It's a, it's a, man. Heather, first of all, number one, you guys are the realest folks on the internet, and that is appreciative in this world right now because there are other people out there that are doing it and showing videos, and they're like setting cameras in every corner of their house and doing all that quote unquote reality TV half stage. You guys will just be real, and that's one thing. Also, you're out here teaching other people how to address their passion, how to put it into a spot, you know, how to find a way to make it work. Now, maybe what you want to teach isn't the exact passion that you have, but you have a skill that you can teach that would allow you to make the money necessary to then in turn go enjoy the F out of your passion. That's there still the passion That's economy. It. That's yes. the icky guy, right? So yes. again, maybe the only reason why I'm jaded upon it is because I'm I'm a freaking Japanese person stuck in a black Puerto Rican fat body, but <laughs> I embrace 
Ikigai. Two things I learned in Japan that I wish I could share with the world like an old Coca-Cola commercial. Wabi-sabi and Ikigai. Oh, I've heard of Wabi-sabi. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, in a single sentence, Wabi-sabi is the beauty lies within the imperfections. Yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. truth is in the imperfections. The reality, your satori, your ultimate enlightenment is in the perfect, in the imperfections. And then one that I share with my homie LP, Yitsumune, right? That's your uniquely you. Like there's only one of you, bro. So like, why, why are you trying to be anything other than you? Because somebody else is trying to tell you to do that. Trying to be yourself is hard AF. Trying to be mm -hmm. somebody else is worse. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely harder. worse. It's climbing a mountain, no ropes, no strings, no pitons, no special shoes. It's climbing a mountain in flip-flops. Or as we say in Hawaii, the slipper. <laughs> you know, the chinclatas, right? Like, I think a lot of people get that stuck. But your, your beauty lies in your imperfections. So... Trust every time you think I can't, somebody mentioned like, how do you come up with a concept for the video? Um, while you're thinking of your concept for videos, maybe just go live on IG and just start talking to people because your people will tell you what they want. Right. Yeah, DJ I, premier, I, give the people what they want. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I think the tricky part about being a content creator, especially a content creator using the passion economy business model is chances are the thing that you are going to offer does not, does not yet exist. You, you create it through the relationship that you build with your community. Cause you real, you know, you, you build the community, you look around, you're like, Hey, every, I'm noticing a pattern, right? Like there's something here that I can uniquely create based on my experience and my skill set and my knowledge that would benefit all of these people. But that doesn't have, I mean, I'm five years into this and I'm only discovering the fashion economy as of this year, right? But it wouldn't have hit me if not for the past five years, right? Like yeah, the passion, I could have like learned about all this and just been like, oh, that's cool. And then never, you know, never even cared. So, so point is like, if you follow your passion, right? If you create content, even, even if it is you alone in your room, no one else has to know, whatever. But the fact that you're exercising your voice, you're putting yourself out there, you're starting to realize that you have something that only you can create, that will lead you to the next opportunity and you don't know you don't know what could grow from there. There you so, go. A uh, quick yeah. question from TBD. It says, Heather, what about folks who want to create a video and live stream just for living their construct and not the one society gives them? I mean, I think that's what we're all doing, isn't it? Like, I think that YouTube, for many of us, starts out as, this is where I could be me. That's how it started for me. Like, I quit my job in 2016. Like I said, this, this is, I think I was 29 or 30. So all of my peers are getting promoted. They're buying houses. They're having kids. They're getting married. And I was like, I'm going to go do this YouTube thing. I, I couldn't. I, who was I going to talk to in my life? Like I was going to bachelorette party, bridal shower. Like that's what everyone else was doing. And I was like, I want to start a business. I want to figure this out. I have no one else to talk to. So I'm going to talk to the camera. Like that was the place for me to be real and, and not be judged by me, my immediate circle. Everyone, I feel like people are scared to put themselves out there because they're afraid of being judged. For me, it was the opposite. Like I didn't, that was the place where I couldn't be judged because I didn't tell anybody about my YouTube channel when I first started it. It wasn't until it started gaining, you know, people who were also trying to start something found me via YouTube. And then I, then I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Now I'll go tell my people about it. And then, of course, it was like, whoa, this YouTube thing that you're doing is super cool. But See, that's yeah, crazy. I think, you know, what's funny is I yeah. realized that when I was first getting back into like doing a lot of creating and trying to decide what I wanted to do with my style and doing uh, YouTube on purpose. Right. Um, I definitely saw some of your earlier videos like prior <laughs> to you and I didn't realize it 
when I ran back into you guys as on a couple channel or something, or I think maybe I was, was in, I, I was in my, yeah, I was in my roadcaster fields and then, you know, Tom came up in the couple channel cause you know how the recommendation is and works. So you watch this guy, 800 videos about why the buttons are square and like why road <laughs> has a, you know, a umlet inside the O uh, that's not the right word. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And yeah, then you guys popped up in the feed and then I saw you guys together and I was like, Hey, Oh yeah, that's her. Right. So the, <laughs> the joke for me, one of my, one of my super tight homies, um, my friend, Tiffany, we call her chippy. You guys could be sisters, right? You guys look alike, act alike, same personalities, thing about everything. And she w was my intern when I was in radio back in the day. And then I helped her do things in her business, stuff like that. So I felt an immediate kindred with you and I had already developed a media nerd with Tom. And then, so when I find out that you guys are one, that was even more dope, right? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm in. Like, I could be part of their squad because, and it's funny yeah. how Tom says, like, it's so true. Like, maybe in in real space, if we didn't have an introduction, we might not know each other. But now that we know each other, most of us feel some sort of friendship or whatever. And you know, even that's a struggle. Like Miss D and I talk about it all the time because she's quote unquote introverted. She lied. <laughs> she always be out here. Hey, how y'all doing? Da -da. She swears she's <laughs> introverted. But I know that if all of us were together, we're at a barbecue somewhere, we would have a blast. Now, would we want to see each other eight days a week and like hang out at Coffee Perk? And talk? Hell no. Right? <laughs> no. Yeah, but like I'll take our once a week love affairs and just enjoy each other's company and use it to push each other and go. You don't, it doesn't have to be roses. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, I I am super lucky. I found the love of my life through YouTube, right? But yeah, yeah. for sure, Doc Rock, like seriously, if I were going to ha Hawaii, I would hit you up, you know? Like, I, I feel like even though we were shut in for a year, I made so many friends that I feel like I am, I feel so lucky to, to have in my life that I will, I would love to meet in person one day, but I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. If it's, if it doesn't happen... It's not like, you know, I still feel a super genuine connection to all these people. And that, that right there, like, fine, you can't translate friendship to a dollar amount, right? And then my, oh, people might be like, oh, so, you know, why are you doing YouTube? What, is it worth it? Yeah, for this connection, this is amazing, right? This is like such a positive impact on my life. Right there, that should be like an indicator of the possibility, the potential of, putting yourself out there and connecting with your, with your people. Right. It's just yeah. like, it's awesome. It's fun. Why wouldn't you? It's, it's so much fun. And knowing that you're able to help people is one thing, but what I keep telling the people, you know, cause they tell me things, this and that I'm like, you know what? You guys are helping me. Yeah, for sure. It definitely right? is a two way street. Yeah. Right. You guys are helping me on a daily basis. I'm over here teaching people how to do stuff. I'm listening to Heather and uh, Dominique the other day, and I'm just like, oh, oh, I, I hear you, I hear you, bro, I hear you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I, I pick up on things because, number one, don't think, uh, Pastor Keith explained it really, really well, don't think that you're at the point where you can't learn, right? Yeah, um, for And sure. we've all done it, I've done it, he admitted to his, right? You know, like on the stream and talk about you have, I don't have no echo. I'm freaking Keith Pelzer. I'm Grammy winning. I, I, my stuff don't echo. Yeah, it is. No, it ain't. But oops. Yes, it is. Sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> like it, it happens, fam. So you got to be willing to learn. You got to be flexible. And yeah, I guess humble to some extent and just go after it, man. All right, Heather, how can people catch up with you? Um you know, anybody that's new, I think everybody here mostly knows you, but we had a lot of people come through today, but yes, how can yeah. people catch up with you? Uh, I have two YouTube channels. Um, one is if you want to learn about YouTube and, and my approach to using the passion economy business model in the world of YouTube, you can check out my tutorial channel. It's just called Heather Ramirez. It's just called my name. I also have a new live stream podcast show every Tuesday at 1 PM Pacific standard time called from one to 100, which is all about seeing success in the passion economy and then i have my vlog channel which is the channel that i started back in 2016 to document my journey as an entrepreneur it's called heather just create and my husband and i 
have a live stream show every Thursday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, called The Couple's Table, where we just, I don't know, hang out. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we share our journey as full-time content creators. That's what we do. What's so, what's so amazing about it is I think people think, oh, I got to have this planned conversation and blah, blah, blah. And I purposely today didn't want to plan the conversation. Yeah, no, I, you gotta I, keep it I, organic. I mm. knew that we would come up with good stuff just because I, I I feel your energy. Like I know what you guys are about. And yeah. Yeah, like so much respect for what you guys do. And yeah, that's it. So sometimes people you gotta just let it go. You know, like yesterday, Loria planned a dope show. We're gonna talk about mics. Man, we talked about all kind of crazy crap as well as mics. <laughs> we did cover the mic questions, but we were on donuts for a hot minute <laughs> and just <laughs> random, <laughs> random things. Like I don't know. She started it with today's National Donut Day. You can't tell me about donuts, woman. Do you know how much I love donuts? <laughs> like, come on. Like, so it became this entire entire thing of people asking me. So, so you get the glaze? Or I know it's the butter. You know, the buttermilk old fashioned. I was like, yeah. That's absolutely, that's how you test if a donut shop is good. Eat the old-fashioned. If the old-fashioned is whack, walk out. Never go back. Don't even put a dollar in the bucket. Just leave. <laughs> so, I love that. Don't even put a dollar in the bucket. Yeah, see, yes, you did start it, LP. It was all your fault. Man, I am happy that you guys, number one, just make it out here in the YouTube space and do your thing. Number two, I am happy that you guys decided to become part of the Ecamm family. We absolutely love oh, you. Yeah, you guys dude. take over week was great. You guys do, have done a lot for helping people see what it is that you can do with your channel. So, you know, I know that you are probably going to get the plaque that you don't think you really want. And again, <laughs> you don't have to want it, but oh, it's going to be fun because it, when you get it, I want to be there like, Heather, where's your plaque? And you can be like, Spikang! Ah! <laughs> so, you can like put little stickers of your dogs in the corner and then, yeah, it's going to oh, be a thing. Man. So, no, I am not well, doing you, my Loria you. dance, Keith. Shut up. And Loria, don't start <laughs> anything. Just don't say it, LP. Don't say it. Um, people, make sure you are keeping up with Miss Heather. Her Instagram is bomb. The content she's creating is amazing. And Dude, I feel like I missed out. This chat was fire. I was like trying to keep up with it. Yeah, it's so like, much, right? <laughs> I got to go back and just, I got to watch this whole session just to keep up with the chat. <laughs> and we were just getting deep. So I wasn't paying as much attention as yeah, I normally do. Here. I normally live in my comments uh, and people trust me. I'm number one. I am happy that so many people came and came to rock with us because we have a fantastic, fantastic family. What's really cool is we have a lot of people that are in both, you know what yeah. I mean? So that, that already is dope. And you know, Oh, this was, this was great. I'm, I'm energized. Class is going to be amazing today. Cause Heather got me jazzed up. You know, <laughs> normally I'm like, I got to go get coffee. I got to do, I don't even have to do anything. I'm I can start class right oh, now. Sweet. Like I am good to go. Thank you for, can I tell you, Heather, from the bottom yeah. of my heart, the first time I popped up on Couples Table, I was finished this stream right here. And then I popped up, and you guys were on the Saturday before you moved it. And I came up by, hey, uh, Alexa, I'm home. Hey, lady, I'm home. So lights come on, TV comes on, Apple TV comes on, goes to, launches YouTube. That's what happens when I walk in the house. Oh, wow. You don't. You don't watch YouTube, you study YouTube. That's it, period. So I automatically pop up. So then I just take out my phone and I just hit play. So whatever the first video is on the queue is up, okay? So, you know, on the Apple TV, it goes to your recommendations and it highlights the first video. So you guys were live and you guys were talking. Crazy. So I'm in the kitchen making toast, right? Now it sounds mundane, but I get Japanese Udani bread. It's the best thing ever if you ever find a Japanese bakery. So I'm making it, da da da, put my little cheese on it, boom, come to sit down. Oh my God! They about dropped my toast. And then Karen comes out of the bedroom, what? I'm like, she's wearing my shirt. Oh, she's wearing my shirt. Uh. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, small. I call her small because she's tiny. I was like, small, like, these two are famous. She's like, yeah, I always see you. you I always see you watch um, Mr. America, Captain America, whatever she calls Tom. Um, always talking about like you know mics and stuff like that. I go, yeah. So I watch him all the time. This is him and his wife, and but she's wearing my shirt, and then she's oh like, ah. and then she's like, you're weird. Like, okay, I guess that's exciting. No, that's exciting. <laughs> so, 
Dude, this is like my favorite shirt, man. I love how, so, you know, where's that purple so, life? Yeah. That's why I made that post after I felt like I had, you know, you know Oprah, Oprah, you cool lady. Never mind you. Heather was rocking my shirt. And then I was like, boom. She, and then you said at that point, you're like, oh, yeah, and I just love purple too. So, boom. I was like, yep, that's my family. Boom. We're good to oh, go. Man, so, I love that. Appreciate you. <laughs> appreciate I love you. that story. Thanks I for am sharing. That much, thanks I am for that much me. of a dork. I am absolutely that much of a dork. And I appreciate you so much. Guys, don't forget, we got Drop Squad class coming up in hour 20. So if you haven't already done so, jump over to the page. You can come to class and hang out with us today. Um, it's a fun. It's like fellowship. It's all the feels. And probably no Rob jokes today because he's at Disney somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so normally we have Rob and Joel cracking jokes and, and we just have a blast. So gang, I appreciate Great. you. Thank you so much, Heather. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate yes. it. And Bye, everybody pop this in the comments real quick, just so that everybody knows, Hey, stay right there. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody knows in case you have it up on the book that Heather's talking about, I put it there so that you guys can get it. And so go get it. And then now I can play my song. Yes. Yeah. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. City of mine. Hello, how people. I love, how Thank I you guys for the 10K, the by the way. Holy crap. It never gets me we're, down. we're going to 50. City and then we're going to 100. Mine. Just so I can go like this. How I love, how <laughs> I love the city of mine. Oh, I appreciate you, family. We will see you. It never gets me down. Born in the city, I was raised on its edges My pop work is life when it's calm Box up on love in its center If I could live here forever, think it'd be for the better I love the weather, even though it's fog 24-7 I love the people, this is city I met all my best friends And I wanna thank every break I wanna thank every entrance to every building that I step in In this city of mine, oh you most my best moments in life See, I fell in love for the first